distinguished guests, Chancellor, Vice Chancellor, Board of Trustees, moms and dads, and family members and friends, and students and graduates. Good morning. This is a beautiful day. Class of 2024, congratulations. You did it. You just, you did it. You blew it out of the park. And so take your moment. Take, take your moment. And to moms and dads and guardians and brothers and sisters and family and friends and professors, congratulations. This is your day too. This graduating class represents the beauty and the diversity of the world. You come from different countries, different cultures, different backgrounds. You have different strengths. You're pursuing different vocations. You're athletes and actors. You're musicians and marketers. Many of you are headed into different areas, some into business, some into education, some into healthcare, science, and justice. Today, as you set off on your individual adventures, you go armed with an excellent education, and you go with a strong community behind you. So you're ready, as I heard you respond to the call of the chancellor. You're ready to, t yes, okay. You're ready to take your place in a complex world. And it is a world that needs you. This is also a world that faces many challenges. And you have read the headlines. There's war, disease, all manner of humanitarian crises, climate change, disinformation, inequity. But I also want you to know that this is a wonderful world. And this is an incredible time for you to be in this world. This is a time of immense scientific discovery, incredible technological breakthroughs, innovation, new tools to reduce poverty, to increase food security, and to heal our planet. And it is a time we've been waiting for, a time for leadership that is a force for good. And so my hope for you today, my prayer, is that each of you, your story, becomes part of this larger narrative of a force for good. So how do you do that? And I'm going to offer you three principles to think about and to take away. The first is to seize small beginnings. The second is to build and nurture community around you. And the third is to stay anchored in your values. Each of you is in a different place right now. Some of you know your next step. You may have an internship or a job lined up. You may be joining a startup. You may be the startup. Some of you aren't sure what this next step is going to be, and that's OK. But each of you, all of you, have dreams you have dreams, you have ambitions, you have plans to build a career, to save, to invest, and to give back to your communities. From my experience, the road ahead is rarely a straight one. But I've learned the value of staying hopeful and seizing small beginnings. For me, the day after graduation was daunting. I had big dreams to work in global diplomacy, to be a peace builder, to broker solutions to conflict. But as I started applying for jobs, I faced rejection after rejection. It was hard. It was humbling. Eventually, after knocking on a lot of doors and sitting through a lot of interviews, I landed my first job. And I gave it my all. It was not exactly what I had envisioned, but it was a great classroom. It exposed me to new worlds, to new people, 
It gave me new skills. And while it was not the job for me, I learned a lot about working with others, and I learned about myself. In my next role, a global healthcare company hired me. I didn't have all the qualifications for the role, but the hiring manager who interviewed me took a bet on me. She said, I know you're smart, but now you're going to have to learn what you don't know. So just start by listening. And once again, I seized that beginning. This job took me around the world, grappling with issues about the role of the private sector, issues of ethics, issues around social change. I could not have anticipated that a healthcare company would be the best place to hone my early instincts for public service, that it would be the best preparation for what I do today. I share this because we don't always start where we want to, but where we start will prepare us for the journey ahead. So whatever tomorrow brings, don't be discouraged. Stay hopeful and seize small beginnings. The journey will be easier if others are beside you. And so this brings me to my second principle, to build and nurture community. Invest in the community that has shaped you right here at USIU Africa. And invest in the communities that you choose for yourself. Each of us needs an authentic community, a group of people who believe in us and who are not afraid to challenge us. For me, that was my mom, my husband, my friends, my mentors. And perhaps it'll be the same for you. Just look around at the people who are here, right with you. Your family, your friends, your professors. Many of the relationships you need in life have been forged right here at USIU Africa. Don't let them go. Draw them in. Nurture these relationships. One way to build a community is to be of service. Community is strengthened not just by what you receive, but by what you give. So give your time. Support a friend. Mentor another young person. Get involved in issues that matter to you. Class of 2024, I know that you are firmly on the path of service. It's been part of your experience here. And collectively, you've started projects to provide access to clean water, to clean energy, to provide books to students who may otherwise not have them. Your service is already strengthening communities, and your community will nurture you. The third principle is to stay true to your values. So much of the future might be outside of our control, but you get to decide you get to decide who you are and what you will be. At USIU Africa, you've been honing your convictions in between the hard work and classes. Maybe you've been having a little bit fun. Maybe you've been up to some mischief. But you've learned. You've learned who you are and who you want to be. Most importantly, you've been figuring out what your convictions are, what you want to believe in, what you want to stand for. As you go forward, as you build your career and in life, you are going to encounter situations which will trouble you. It could be a decision and how it's taken at your organization. It could be a conversation where you find the tone or the content disrespectful or unjust. And you will f need to find your way, and you will. You'll need to learn what, what is the right thing for you to do. In some cases, listen politely and move on. In other cases, listen politely and speak up. It is in the everyday things, in your work, with your colleagues, with your friends, at the dinner table. Listen to that inner voice. Each of us has an internal moral compass. 
listen. Listen to that inner voice. Because our convictions are not proven in grand moments. Rather, they shine in the small daily decisions, in the consistency of those decisions. These small acts of courage, which tell you who you are and affirm your values. So in closing, let me return to where I began. The road ahead for each of you will be different. But your journey is part of a much larger story of where our world is and where it is headed. You get to decide which story you contribute to. And I've no doubt that you will be part of that narrative, which is all about progress of possibility and accomplishment. One that ensures inclusion for a much more connected world. Whatever choice you make, know that you're not alone. Wherever your journey leads, know that the world needs what you have to offer. Yes, your skills and your knowledge, but also your optimism, your creativity, your compassion. These are all the ingredients which make communities richer, which makes our lives much more meaningful, and which make our world stronger, fairer, and better. So class, congratulations. I'm very excited for you, and I know I speak for all of us that we can't wait to see what you accomplish next. Thank you.